I would like to start the meeting. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all and to declare open this special virtual session of a subsidiary body on implementation. Before I start, I would like to thank all of you for joining this session today and for the enthusiasm you have shown to participation in these virtual meetings. We have received many positive feedback and support from yesterday's section. However, some challenges was also experienced, especially with the number of statements that could be made in the short time that we had. And as you know, unlike usual SAPSTA or SBI sessions, interpretation has been reduced to just two hours and thus contributed to the challenges. Now, back to the focus of our session today. The focus of our session today and partly tomorrow will be the testing of a party-led review process through an open-ended forum. As you are aware, further to decision 14 slash 29 of a conference of the parties, the trial phase of an open ended forum was originally planned to be held during the third meeting of the subsidiary body of implementation. However, due to ongoing uncertainties related to the COVID-19 pandemic and the new dates for SBI free, I request the Bureau last to consider holding the trial phase online in advance of SBI free, to which they agreed. We are therefore meeting today and tomorrow to participate in this trial phase of the Open Ended Forum. And tomorrow we'll also have a short session on resource mobilization. The main objectives of the Open Ended Forum being tested online today and tomorrow are to undertake country by country view of implementation of the convention, to increase transparency regarding action undertaken, successes and challenges, facilitate peer learning among parties and to identify strategic actions to overcome obstacles in national implementation. I wish to thank the Executive Secretary and her staff for the preparations made for this special session. I also would like to thank the Bureau of the Conference Parties for its support. And before we begin, I'm happy to know that we have with us Dr. Fuda, who will address us on behalf of the COP14 Presidency. Dr. Fuda, please raise your hand. Dr. Fuda, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Do you hear me? Good. Well, I'm giving this statement on behalf of Dr. Hamdallah Zidan, representative of COP14 Presidency. Distinguished delegates, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as a representative of the current president of the uh, Conference of the Parties, Egypt, it is an honor for me to welcome you to the trial phase of the open-ended forum on the review of implementation being held online today and tomorrow, as well as short information, uh, information session on research mobilization tomorrow. I trust that you and your loved ones are well during the, these difficult times. I would like to express my solidarity with you whenever, wherever you are in the world. As we have heard yesterday at the launch of the fifth edition of the Global Biodiversity Outlook during the special virtual session of Sabista, we regress to implement the strategic plan for biodiversity 2011-2020 and the Asia Biodiversity Targets 
has been insufficient. It has been made very clear to us that significant additional efforts are required at all level to increase the level of implementation of the convention and the new global biodiversity framework in the post 2020 period. Strengthening, strengthening, planning, monitoring, reporting, and review has a critical role in helping to accomplish this. The same message has been reinforced I think we lost connection. I speak. Hello. All right. Do you hear me now? The same message has been reinforced through the submission received from parties, partners, and other stakeholders. The discussion at the regional and thematic workshops and consultations held this year, as well as through the outcome of the thematic consultation on transparent implementation, monitoring, review, and reporting, and the outcomes of the first and second meetings of the open-ended working group on the post 2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. As you know, in decision 14-29, the Conference of Parties decided to explore the development of an enhanced review mechanism for the Convention, or what can also be referred to as enhanced multidimensional approach to reviewing implementation, to strengthen implementation under the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework, and to prepare a party-led review process to be tested at SPI 3. I would like to remind participants that initial considerations of options for strengthening implementation under the Convention goes back several years. In fact, to the seventh meeting of the Conference of the Parties held in Kuala Lumpur in 2004, uh, uh, that adopted respective decisions on monitoring and indicators, including the decision or at national level, monitoring programs and indicators on the assessment of process and an environmental impact assessment and strategic environment assessment as well. Distinguished delegates, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we expertise, your expertise and experience is in implementing the convention in your respective countries to date are invaluable to the development of an enhanced review mechanism. I trust that these sessions will stimulate good discussions, thought through and thoughts and ideas on the subject as we advance toward COP15, which is expected to adopt a global biodiversity framework for the post-2020 period. Tomorrow, we also shall hear a report from the panel of experts on resource mobilization. You will recall that decision 142020, the Conference of Parties affirmed that resource mobilization would be an integral part of the post 2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. COP14 requested the Executive Secretary to contract a panel of experts to undertake preparatory work on resource mobilizations on several aspects related to the development of the resource mobilization components in order to inform the work of open-ended working group on the post 2020 global biodiversity framework and the conference of the parties i am more than convinced that together we can provide meaningful input to discussions during spi3 and formulate sound recommendations for submission to the third meeting of the open-ended working group on the post 2020 global biodiversity framework and to the 15th meeting of the conference of the parties for their respective consideration thank you very much
Thank you, Dr. Fuda. I would now like to invite the Executive Secretary, Ms. Elizabeth Maruma Mrema, to deliver her remarks to this special virtual session of SBI. Ms. Mrema, please raise your hand. Ms. Maruma Mrema, you have the floor. Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this special session, special virtual session of the subsidiary body of implementation. And I sincerely thank you all for your participation. May I also offer my sincere thanks to the government of Egypt, representing the presidents of the COP14 for joining us today. And Mr. Ford has given us his greetings to that effect. Today, we will seek to harness the latest communication technologies and take a virtual step forward in the intergovernmental process. Although we are in the midst of the extraordinary global pandemic and all the pain and disruption it has wrought, we will not let it deter us in our work. Instead, we will renew our sense of urgency and redouble our resolve to conserve and protect biodiversity and nature. We often speak of important role of technology in protecting biodiversity. Today, as the saying goes, we have an opportunity to put our money where our mouth is and continue our progress virtually as we seek to advance our discussions on key issues essential for our future success. However, I do also wish to acknowledge the challenges we face, and our chair has equally alluded to that. In yesterday's virtual session of the fifth edition of the Global Biodiversity Outlook, we received a number of requests for the floor which we were unable to accommodate due to the limi limited time we had available. We also acknowledge that we had some difficulties in prioritizing regional statements, as the chair had indicated would have been the case. We are all learning to optimize the way we can work virtually. And please be assured that the secretariat and the chairs will take into account the experiences of these meetings and the lessons from them as we move forward. I would also like to remind you that you will have additional opportunities to make interventions on the global biodiversity outlook and the other issues that we'll be discussing during the course of this week when we have our official SABSTA and SBA meetings in the coming months. I thank you all for your understanding as we continue to adapt to this new way of working. With regards to the part-led uh, review process, distinguished delegates, it is indeed fitting that the special preparatory sessions for SBI begin with this important item on review of implementation. At its 14th meeting, the Conference of the Parties considered review mechanisms for the convention and requested me to prepare for and organize the testing of a party-led review process, including through an open-ended forum to be held at SBI 3. At this special virtual session, we will hear from five parties representing five UN regional groups, namely Guyana, Sri Lanka, Ethiopia, Poland, and Finland, who have kindly agreed to participate in the trial phase of the country-by-country -country review process. Each of the five parties have prepared a review report, complementing their sixth report reports on their efforts to implement the Convention and the Strategic Biodiversity Plan 2011-2020. Each will further engage in the exchange of questions and answers to provide additional insights. 
I would like to sincerely thank these five parties for their willingness to take the stage today. I would also like to thank the other parties that have read the review reports and have already shared uh, with us questions for this session. The emerging insights and perspectives provided during this trial phase of the open-ended forum will be essential in advancing the SBA's consideration of review mechanisms at this third session. But from a broader perspective, I am confident that these reports will also provide the global community with tangible evidence of genuine progress towards biodiversity conservation and protection. They will equally show the world that we are well on our way towards establishing new relationship in our vital natural capital, one that is safer, safer, healthier, and more sustainable and inclusive. They will also help us to better understand some of the difficulties we face so as we may continually improve our on our efforts. I look forward to today and tomorrow's presentation and discussions. I'm sure this experience will be valuable when parties meet for SBA 3 and further address options for enhanced to review mechanism and agenda item nine of the provisional agenda. With regards to resource mobilization, this special virtual session of SBA will equally consider the issue of resource mobilization, an issue as complex and challenging and yet very vital. At its 14th meeting, the conference of the parties affirmed that resource mobilization will be an integral part of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. The conference thus, established, thus requested me to contract a panel of experts to prepare reports on issues related to the development of the resource mobilization component, which will help inform the work of the working group on post-2020 global biodiversity framework, as well as the conference of the parties. Tomorrow, we will invite the panel to present its important work on resource mobilization and also answer your questions on this issue. The availability of adequate and predictable financial resources is essential for effective implementation. However, ensuring resource mobilization will in turn require us to prepare to bring about transformative, inclusive, and equitable change across all economies and society at large. While this challenge may seem formidable, I'm optimistic that the insights provided by the panel, along with the thoughtful perspectives to be provided tomorrow, can put us all well on our way to collectively charting a path forward and helping the world to build more resilient economic systems. Ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to hearing your inputs on these important topics. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Ms. Maruma Marema, for your warm welcome. I look forward to your continued support in facilitating this session. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, let us now turn to the focus of our special session today. The presentation on review reports by parties. Representation of each of the five parties will be followed by 15 minutes question and answer session. You may recall through a notification that was issued on August 14th, parties were invited to examine the review reports and send questions that they would like to be addressed during the open-ended forum to the Secretariat, stating clearly for which party or parties they are intended. As indicated in the agreed procedure for this trial phase, 
The five presenting countries have selected questions from those received from other parties that were sent in by deadline, and they will respond during the session. Before we begin the presentations, may I request the Secretariat to introduce the agenda item. Secretariat, please raise your hand. Secretariat, you have the floor. In decision 1429, the Conference of the Parties considered review mechanisms for the convention and requested the Executive Secretary to organize the testing of a party-led review process. The virtual session today is the opportunity for this testing. This special virtual session, as well as the procedure for the trial phase of the open-ended forum, has been prepared in close consultation with the Bureau of the COP. Additionally, there are two relevant communications that you may want, wish to refer to as a reference. These include notification 2022 and 2050. In the first notification, 2022, parties were invited to express an interest in participating in the testing. Five parties, one from each region, were then selected to participate. The five parties are Ethiopia, Finland, Guyana, Poland, and Sri Lanka. Each of the five parties prepared a written report available on the CBD website. In notification 202050, parties were invited to submit questions related to these reports. Today, these parties, the five parties, will be presenting their review, which aims to summarize their efforts to implement the Convention and the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011 to 2020, and they will respond to selected questions which were submitted in response to notification 202050. Each presentation will also be followed by a short question and answer session. The results of this online forum and of the success of the country by country review mechanism pilot will be discussed at SBI3. Thank you. Thank you, Secretariat. Before I open the floor for the presentations and question and answer session, I would like to invite the Secretariat to give us some information on how to request to speak and the use of a platform. Secretariat, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and good evening. If you wish to speak, please press the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. It will turn yellow and your status will show hand raised. Please do not press twice on this button as this will put you at the end of the queue. We will be notified of your request in our queue system. The chair will invite you to speak when it is your turn. You will see on your status bar micro a microphone open and your speak button will flash in blue. Press the speak button, it will turn red to live, which will turn on your camera and microphone automatically. Wait for two seconds, then proceed with your intervention. You may wish to ask the audience if you can be heard easily. When you are finished, please press the speak button again to turn off your live broadcast. Also, please note, unless you raise your hand, the mic cannot be given to you. So when the chair calls your country, please raise your hand in order for your mic to be on. Please speak slowly so that the interpreters are easily able to follow your statements. We would also like to remind parties that parties that are making regional statements to forward these statements to statements at cbd.int as soon as possible and preferably, preferably before the start of a session. All other statements should also be emailed to statements at cbd.int. We would also like to remind part participants that the chat box is for brief communications and therefore to keep your remarks short in the chat box. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Secretariat. And before we begin, uh, 
I should note that we anticipate that this special session will start today, but also continue tomorrow, the 17th September, for up to one hour. I would now like to invite Sri Lanka to make a presentation. Sri Lanka, please raise your hand. Sri Lanka, you have the floor. Biological diversity, parties, distinguished delegates, colleagues. Good morning and good uh, afternoon to all. Thank you for inviting Sri Lanka to present our effort to implementation of Convention and Strategies Plan for Biodiversity 2011-20 at the SPI Forum. Uh, I uh, will present my screen. I will share my screen. Just a moment. Yes. I will present my uh, information as a following outline. General overview on present status of biodiversity, MB Sub Sri Lanka, protected area, challenges in implementation of NB conservation recommendation from six national reports Sri Lanka, technical and financial resources provided to provided to receive from multiple sources for implementation of the uh, activities and preparation to post-2020 global biodiversity framework. In uh, general overview on present status of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is an island country lying in the Indian Ocean and separated from Peninsula India by Fox Strait. It is located between latitude 555 and uh, 951 north and longitude 7941 and 8143 east. The nation has a total land area of 65,610 square kilometers ter terrestrial and aquatic area is uh, larger than that. You can see the map, our terrestrial area and the aquatic area like this. Sri, uh, Sri Lanka, one of the 36 hotspots in the world of biodiversity as well. Uh, Sri Lanka has a different type of ge geographical areas, mountains, highest areas and lowland areas as well. The, therefore, it is, uh, we can see different type of ecosystems within that country. Uh, all type of the ecosystem we can see, monsoon, uh, lowland wet zone forest, monsoon forest, and dry zone uh, forest, mangroves, uh, and uh, coastal and marine ecosystems, we can see all type of ecosystem within this tiny island. In uh, relation to the biodiversity, we have high endemism. You can see freshwater crabs are 98% endemic, amphibians are 87% endemic, land snails are 79% endemic like you can see several type of endemism in the country. You know, this is the figures uh, given from uh, our National Red List 2012. We have our uh, indigenous angiosperm flora, uh, 3,154. Uh, 3, 900, uh, 894 are endemic to Sri Lanka. 
two gymnosperms and pteridophytes also there, the spiders, marine crustacean. Those are the, our uh, rich biodiversity native species. And uh, you can see uh, these maps. Those maps are uh, showing uh, distribution of endemic species. This map showing endemic angiosperm species distribution. So those are the wet, wet, wet zone area. This is highly uh, high distribution. You can see dry zone area also. Uh, Island white, you can see the endemic uh, flora. And uh, fauna also like this. A oh, lot of end those are the endemic fauna, fauna genera. You can see uh, high end, uh, species density, you can see within the wet zone area. This map uh, shown mangrove distribution like this from north to south, you can see several mangrove ecosystems around the coastal line. Now, among the endemics, there are several endemic genera representing most of the taxonomic groups, like I uh, earlier shows the map. Now, many of these genera are in the lowland and mountain rainforest ecoregions as shown in the map. Other than that, forest and grasslands of the intermediate so intermediate and dry zones are the main habitat of the islands, large charismatic mammals. You can see the elephant, uh, leopard, bear, and deer, which are major tourist attraction for the country. Not only that, wet zone forests are the watersheds for major rivers that provide fresh water to the nation. Those are the river map. You can see uh, we have uh, many rivers with, uh, around the country, mainly 103 major rivers and various type of associated wetlands are there. You can see. Those uh, wetlands, rivers, and tanks harbor many endemic aquatic species, but, but many of them are threatened due to human action. Those are the some wetland areas. Sri Lanka. Yeah. Sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you, but it seems to be an echo. Uh, could you maybe speak it closer to the mic? And uh, I don't know exactly why it's an echo, but uh, it make it easier to follow. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. And then uh, in the country, we have identified uh, several threats to biodiversity. Main threat is over exploitation, then biopiracy and thefts, habitat loss, degradation and fragmentation, a spread of invasive alien species, all forms of pollution. Population pressure and human wildlife conflicts uh, are the major causes that contribute to loss of biodiversity in Sri Lanka. Other than that, new research findings indicated that impacts of climate change aggravates the above threats further. When we uh, consider the, our MBSAP, uh, Considering the importance of conservation of biological diversity, sustainable utilization, and access to genetic resources and benefit sharing, we signed the Convention on Biological Diversity in 1992 and ratified in 1994. After that, we have prepared our first national action plan for the Biodiversity Conservation is named as Biodiversity Conservation in Sri Lanka, a framework for action in 1998. Then we prepared an addendum to 
uh, BCAP in 2007, uh, including uh, new aspects related to the biodiversity conservation. Then second MBSAP was prepared for 2016 to 2022 period by Ministry of Environment and is being implemented through the application of ecosystem-based approach, which is more consistent with current approaches to biodiversity conservation, including biodiversity mainstreaming in national development priorities. The second plan is uh, linked to achieving the IT biodiversity targets and the sustainable development goals. Mission of the National Biodiversity Strategic Action Plan Sri Lanka is Sri Lanka's biodiversity is valued, conserved and sustainable use to benefit all its citizens. It has uh, five strategic objectives, ensure the long-term conservation of biodiversity, promote sustainable use of biological resources, conserve agrobiodiversity, promote equitable sharing of benefits from biodiversity and improve human well-being through an ecosystem approach. We have established 12 targets with 87 activities to achieve the above objectives. First uh, target is ensure the long-term conservation of biodiversity. Uh, under the low, uh, first objective, we have four targets. First one is by 2022, a system is established and ongoing for inventorizing species. Ecosystem functions structure like this. We need more uh, information regarding the biodiversity. Therefore, we establish this one. Sri Lanka, I'm very yes. sorry to interrupt once again. <laughs> I, I have been informed that uh, the echo might be because that you use two gadgets. Could you maybe check? So, so you don't have two mics on? Yes, on. Uh, I'm sorry. Or maybe two. Hello? It's okay. It's okay. Hello? Now it's okay? I think it's better. Hello? Okay. Yeah. Hmm? Please go ahead. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Then uh, second uh, target is by 2022, habitat loss, degradation, and fragmentation are significantly reduced. Then uh, the, according to the uh, achievements, we are in, in line with the uh, target, but insufficient rate. In uh, third one is by uh, 2022, uh, Protected area network is made representative for all critical ecosystems and species and managed effectively. Then fourth one is by 2022, the loss of species is significantly reduced. We are working on those uh, targets. Then second, uh, ob under the second objective, we have fifth one, by 2022, the evaluation of biodiversity is mainstream. Then six is, to, uh, by 2022, mechanisms are established to ensure sustainable use of biodiversity. Then uh, uh, by 2022, traditional sustainable uses of biodiversity is promoted and established. Then uh, under the third objective, we have two targets. By 2022, sustainable agriculture practices are promoted and established. The nine is by 2022, genetic diversity of macropile relatives, cultivated species and livestock are conserved. This activity towards the target is there. 
at our fourth objective we have one target by 2022 a mechanism for equitable sharing of benefits arising from biodiversity is established and implemented then fifth uh, objective we have two targets uh, target 11 is by 2022 the capacity of ecosystem to deliver goods and services and provide protection from hazard is enhanced then 12 one is last one by 2022 by safety is ensured in our action plan i show only one uh, uh, table for you like uh, it's uh, prepared as uh, like this uh, action are there this is the target then uh, actions are there then indicators showing then primary and secondary uh, stakeholders are identified to implementation of the target and time frame and the uh, uh, IG targets inline IG targets and the SDG goal as well then some act uh, according to the first target we have prepared our national rate list including all indigenous species this work as the database for our indigenous species then uh, those are some uh, activities related to pollinator conservation mainly for the butterfly conservation this using our school children they have prepared their butterfly garden to conserve our all type of butterflies then this is one of activity we have taken to uh, implement uh, redu uh, eradication of invasive alien species this is one of uh, uh, species ulex uh, growing growing throughout uh, through the mountain area now we are successfully control this new lakes this is one of a fish species tank cleaner it's very difficult to control now we are getting some actions to control but it is very difficult to this is one of uh, prosopis species it's also very difficult to control but uh, but we are getting some actions to control this is uh, some opuntia species a cat track was also very difficult to uh, control and uh, we have taken some actions to implementation of soil biodiversity conservation we have prepared soil biodiversity conservation action plan and a symposium were conducted one of the symposium proceedings you can see and some uh, lot of uh, awareness material we prepared for the aware the general public and uh, all type of uh, stakeholders uh, our native language and the english language yeah, in, when we discuss the protected area we have uh, some uh, legal tools to protect our uh, natural for forest and the ecosystems first uh, one is flora and fauna protection ordinance it is a uh, authorized agency is the department of wildlife conservation then forest conservation ordinance is the forest department then national environment plan implemented through central environment authority then coast conservation act coast conservation and coastal resources management department implemented soil conservation next department of agriculture fisheries management area and fisheries resource managed by the those uh, under the fisheries management act fisheries management resource and the fisheries management areas managed by department of fisheries and aquatic resources we have uh, forest cover uh, 1 1.9 million hectares uh, the, uh, it's about 29% uh, 29.7% uh, 9, 9 from the 
related to the all land area the total terrestrial protected area in relation to total land area is 18.7 we uh, uh, exceed the uh, ig target in relation to the terrestrial uh, protected area but marine protected area only 0.3% we have to go towards the marine protected area target under the forest department we uh, we can see the uh, several uh, categories of forest national heritage wilderness area conservation forest forest reserves forest plantations mangroves and other coastal habitats and uh, you can see the protected area uh, like this uh, the blue brown and different type of colors according to these categories then for us uh, for under the forest department sri lanka under, yeah. Sorry yeah. to come back again. Uh, since time is running, maybe you, I think you have a, about five minutes left. So if okay. you please can okay. try I, to keep on okay. to, okay. to, to continue and I, also I, main challenges. Yes, five minutes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Those are all other uh, protected area categories. Then challenge. I uh, how the I will implement the. I will uh, say set some challenges. Absence of an appropriate multi-tiered multi -tiered structure to monitor implementation of, of the MCEP. We have to identify clear roles and responsibilities among the different government agencies. Then poor perception of potential offered by biodiversity for national development is another challenge. The lack of trained staff to prepare compelling project proposals also one challenge. Then a species and genetic diversity within terrestrial and island aquatic ecosystems uh, appears high, but is incompletely known uh, the, their number of species and the, their categories. Then uh, other one is establishing an effective decision-making support system. Then capacity building also, we have some problem with that. Then uh, conservation recommendation of the sixth national report, uh, Sri Lanka has identified several uh, conservation recommendations, mainly uh, you can see the threats mentioned above, we have to uh, tackle those th threats, synergies need, and uh, youth should be uh, encouraged to conservation purposes, valuation need, conducting a strategic environmental assessment also we need. Then uh, technical and financial resources provided for received from multiple sources. Uh, according to our uh, biofin uh, data collection, biofin expenditure review, they have mentioned our biodiversity expenditure gradually increasing. Uh, 2010 to 2015, it's increased 80 percent like this. Then uh, mainly uh, technical and financial expenditure IT targets, we are uh, expanding more on IT targets 11, then 10 and IT targets 1. And then uh, national targets, also national target three, national target four, and national targets two are uh, more exp expenditure, okay, you can see. Yeah, then uh, preparation to post 2020 GBF, we have uh, conducted several, uh, started the discussion with National Expert Committee on Biological Diversity and relevant expert uh, stakeholders to uh, uh, so, so provide some inputs to preparation of global biodiversity framework. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you for giving this opportunity for Sri Lanka. Thank you for it. Thank you, madam.
Yes, thank you, Sri Lanka, for your presentation. I will now open the floor for, for questions by representatives of the parties. First, we'll have a question from Uganda. Uganda, please raise your hand. Uganda, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, CBD, for holding this uh, meet meeting. I have two questions for Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, thank you for your uh, wonderful presentation. The first question is um, section 1 to 12. Uh, we need further explanation so that we can learn some good lessons, as you have presented. And then the second question is, what is the status of the actions and planned measures to achieve the stated SDG targets that you have stated there. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Uganda. We will take a set of questions together. So I now we have a question from Sweden. Sweden, if you please raise your hand. Sweden, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Maybe you can speak a little higher. All right. Can you hear me better now? Now I hear you better. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sri Lanka, for this uh, excellent report and your very interesting presentation. Our question is as follows. In your um, report and presentation, you describe under challenges a poor perception of the potential offered by biodiversity for national development among decision makers and investors. Um, and you um, formulate the need for messages that communicate a business case for investing in biodiversity conservation. Could you maybe um, elaborate on examples of businesses having benefited from investing in biodiversity conservation and at the same time helped to achieve national targets? Thank you. Thank you, Sweden. And we do have one more question from Sri Lanka. We have a question from India. India, if you please raise your hand. Yes, India, you have the floor. India, please go ahead. India, we cannot hear you. Oh, yeah, now I can hear you. Please, India, go ahead with your question. Thank you. I'm sorry for the glitch. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sri Lanka, uh, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, in addition to its peer-to-peer -peer learning function, uh, the voluntary peer review exercise under the convention has a very strong capacity-building component. It would be interesting to hear from the representative of Sri Lanka about the usefulness and added value of this uh, VPR as a means of identifying gaps in NBSAP implementation and capacity building needs that were previously overlooked? And could the representative of Sri Lanka elaborate on some specific actions being undertaken or planned as a result of the VPR? Thanks. Thank you, India. I would now like to turn to Sri Lanka again for their response. And uh, Sri Lanka, you have uh, about 10 minutes for your responses. Sri Lanka, you have the floor. Oh, questions. Uh, for the question one, uh, Ganda, uh, yeah, I, I uh, earlier explained the preparation of the MBSAP with the five strategic objectives. And uh, we have uh, taken several actions to uh, implement those activities. Uh, achieving the MBSAP target one, uh, 
uh, we prepared our national red list with uh, stakeholder consultation we uh, the all research communities were contributed to uh, provide their information related to the biodiversity mainly a species and ecosystem we prepared red list with database so in the achieving the uh, target one then uh, ta target one uh, disseminate the all uh, according to the uh, our progress reports we uh, taken some actions to disseminate all information among the uh, public mainly through the pu publication electric electronic media and printed media and uh, local uh, communities we provide several uh, tax uh, several uh, training programs to identify a species for uh, research purposes then uh, second question is what is the uh, status of action plan measures to achieve the status sdg targets uh, we have uh, prepared our national biodiversity strategic plan in line with the sdg goals uh, as the example sdg goal 15.1 it's uh, by 2020 ensure the conservation restoration and sustainable use of rare seal and island freshwater ecosystem as yeah, like China. Uh, China is asking so, sorry uh, uh, we have established our tar MBCEP target 3 to achieve the uh, SDG 15.1 then our national target to establish for the uh, achievement of sdg 15.2 we are uh, now uh, establish uh, we are getting several actions to restore the our restore our ecosystems mainly mangrove restoration were done and other ecosystem also may, uh, natural region uh, assist to natural regeneration tool we use to uh, restore the our degraded natural areas uh, 15 at uh, sdg 15.8 also uh, target through our national target to uh, under this category we uh, work on uh, preparation of the national policy for the uh, invasive alien species management research were conducted to uh, identify the proper mechanisms to control the invasive alien species then then we prepared pre-risk assessment protocols to identify the uh, invasive alien species before entering the country and force uh, risk assessment protocol for the identification of uh, uh, existing invasive alien species. I think Uganda is okay with that answers. Then I will go to the questions uh, yeah, raised by the Sweden. Uh, according to this, Sri Lanka is one of the most biological diverse country in the Asia varied climate and topography which has resulted in rich biodiversity distributed within the range of ecosystem uh, uh, may, one example is uh, the ecotourism ecotourism uh, uh, we can do as a business conserving the our biodiversity some, uh, some but some people uh, try to destroy the uh, our uh, uh, rich biodiversity to uh, construct some uh, accommodation facilities and uh, like this but we can uh, we can uh, use our natural habitat for uh, improve their uh, livelihood 
uh, with the, as a business tool. Uh, tourists, uh, without destroying the uh, natural uh, ecosystems, we can improve their tourist facilities. This is one example. Another is eco labeling. We can uh, label our commercial products, tea, some paper, like this. We can uh, market our commercial products with eco labels with the uh, name of the surrounding ecosystem, then uh, it's a purity. We can uh, uh, market like this. We can uh, uh, the improve. Uh, we can uh, use our business base. Uh, we uh, for use our ecosystem conservation through the business persons. Then uh, some uh, can. Yeah. Sri Lanka, you need to wrap up. So I'm sorry, but we have the time okay. is out. Just okay. one minute left. Okay, okay. I will uh, answer the last question. Yes. And in uh, re relation to the peer review, uh, VPR and the MBSAP, uh, VPR and the Six National Report, VPR conducted through the. Uh, different type of uh, uh, with the different discipline uh, and ex uh, uh, di uh, different experiences team it's a international team they have uh, their MBSAPs, they have their uh, different uh, experiences within their area uh, but a six national report uh, can uh, report prepared through only national uh, uh, experts, but uh, VPR prepared through the uh, international various type of uh, experience group. Therefore, we can share their knowledge, uh, their experiences to uh, improve our national targets and national activities. This is the main uh, experience we uh, taken from them uh, according to the uh, VPR and all ex uh, are the graphs. There are more experiences than then uh, our local people uh, team uh, expert team share with their knowledge with our local people as well. Not only the expert groups. Therefore, very uh, this is the very important experience related to the VPR and the. Uh, MBSAP, six national. It's okay. Thank you, Sri Lanka. Thank you for you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I just want like to remind parties. I acknowledge that both China and South Africa has asked for the floor. However. Um, as already explained, uh, the modalities is already decided and information sent out by uh, notification is that only questions sent beforehand could be answered in this session. So I'm sorry, that's why I cannot give you the floor at this time. I do apologize, but according to agreed modalities, this is the reason why. So many thanks, Sri Lanka, and may I congratulate you on being the first party to be reviewed. On behalf of all parties, I wish to thank you for your willingness to participate in this process, which will certainly be a benefit for the convention process. Thank you very much. Now, I will now go on and I would like to give the floor to Ethiopia to make a presentation. Ethiopia, if you may raise your hand. Yes, Ethiopia, you have the floor. Position. Hmm? Uh, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, we would like to thank the Secretariat and all those who have involved uh, to make this uh, session a reality so that we can learn, we can present our experience and also learn from uh, others, all the level of implementation and how it went 
for strategic for the strategic plan 2011-2020 tak Thank you. The our title is a, uh, a provided one, and the content of my presentation are those that have been submitted by the secretariat. Those all five I will go one by one. The first uh, presentation title was actions that have been taken to implement the convention in the strategic plan for biodiversity 2011-2020 in Ethiopia. The implementation of this convention started by revising the NPSAP itself. And the revising of the NPSAP took into account global priority, uh, global and party level provisions and com uh, commitments. After we received the invitation from the Secretariat, uh, Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute, which is a focal point, was to set a stage, including assigning national coordinator for the NPSAP, developing the annual work plan for the, course, for the revision, establishing the uh, national project steering committee, which will oversaw the overall revision process and involving in capacity building processes. The other activities that were conducted for revision were nominating and training technical team members, which were to on, on overall end up sub revision processes, and while so using them, uh, taking the stock and drafting its reports, stock taking report. This was to do with identified priority, conservation, sustainable use, and ABS issues, and then identifying relative uh, relevant government policy and strategies evaluating this, the existing national capacity, especially on the institutional, human, and financial, taking into account lessons from the plan, the planning and implementation of efforts of the previous NPSAP, and then producing the stock taking report and having it validated at uh, national stakeholders, uh, uh, stakeholders workshop. The other thing that we took seriously into account was the global provisions. This includes the shared vision, mission, goals, as well as another pro other provisions that are IT virus targets, thematic areas, cross-cutting issues, and guidelines. Then we were to produce draft national biology strategy, which was validated by the national stakeholder at the national stakeholder workshop, and then producing draft revised edibles up, which again for uh, to come with mapping national biodiversity targets to IT biodiversity targets. All the listed priority issues of conservation, sustainable use, and ABS that stakeholders have identified during validation of stock taking phase were to be prioritized uh, on the way how they can be mapped or how they can be contributed to the IHRF targets. And then getting it validated by the stakeholders at the national stakeholder workshops, finalizing the strategy and action plan, getting it validated by the stakeholders at the national stakeholder workshops and then getting it endorsed by policymakers and submitting to the SSPD. The Ethiopian National Biosphere Targets so revised how, uh, has uh, 18 national targets, all of which are mapped to the IT Biosphere Targets, 44 indicators, 58 actions, and 10 implementing agencies, time, uh, and, uh, as well as implementation time frame. The budget required for the implementation was developed as a separate document and was submitted to CVD and GF. This table indicates the strategic goals, global strategic goals, which actually are also ours, and the number of IT virus targets each goal contains and the, each number of uh, Ethiopian national targets it contains. As I said, our target has, 80, our uh, revised and sub uh, had 18 targets, 44 indicators, and 55 actions. As I said, all the priority issues that were identified at the stock taking and approved by, by leaders by the stakeholders were to be mapped to the 
uh, IT bar targets. Otherwise, uh, all, all we have not taken them all. As you see, national Ethiopian national bar target one was mapped to contribute as a relevant to contribute to IT bar target one and indirectly or indirectly contribute to IT bar target two, four, and nineteen. With this, all of the targets, 18 targets, were mapped this way. Otherwise, if it cannot contribute, we didn't take any action as a target. These are the implementing agencies I said are 10. First is the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change, which is now a commission. Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries, Ministry of Water, Irrigation and Energy, Ministry of Education, Ministry, uh, it happened by uh, Ministry of Industry, Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute, Ethiopian Wild, Wildlife Conservation Authority, Plan and Development Commission, and Ethiopian Institute of Agriculture Research. The activities now, we have finished revision of our uh, NBSA and uh, the implementation, implementation arrangement was to be put in place. How time is set, implementers are set, actions are set now, the arrangement was to be put. As a result, Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute is the national focal point and was responsible to implement and coordinate the, the overall implementation. Therefore, it has coordinated the establish, establishment and functioning of National Biodiversity Technical Committee, National Biodiversity Council, and time frame for the meetings of this council and committee, developed a reporting format and reporting time frame of the implementation by the implementing agencies, the NBTC, which I said before, was responsible to evaluate level of implementation by, uh, lead, uh, by implementing institutions compiled by the NBSAP office that has been collected from the implementing agencies at a quarterly basis and was to come up with the way forward that will be discussed further at annual meetings of National Biodiversity Council. It was comprised uh, of directors of plan directors and focal persons of the lead institutions, one international NGO and one local NGO and plan and development commission. It was chaired by the deputy director general of EBI and the meeting was at a biannual basis. The NBC, National Biodiversity, Biodiversity Council was uh, responsible to evaluate annual level of implementation compiled by the National Biodiversity Technical Committee and was to provide strategy direction for further action, especially for those actions that were lagging uh, during a given fiscal year. Its composition was chairperson of agriculture, pastoral and environmental protection affairs of study committee of the uh, House of uh, People's Party of Ethiopia, ministers, state ministers, commissioners uh, of lead implementing agencies, ministry of finance, uh, plan and development commission, Minister of Science and Higher Education, and heads of one local and one international NGO. Chairperson of the NBC was uh, the Commissioner of the Ethiopian Environment, Forest, Climate Change Commission, and the calendar was at an all basis. Outcomes expected, uh, now I will, I will come to the outcomes. Outcomes expected from the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011-2020 from parties are two. These are developed or revised NBSAP that have been adopt, adopted by the, as a policy instrument and implemented in particular manner and submitted to the Secretariat by 20, 2015, which is the requirement of IT by Reserve Target 17, and developing fifth and sixth national reports and submitting to the Secretariat on a timely basis. Accordingly, Ethiopia has revised its NBSAP and submitted to SCBD in 2015, and submitted its fifth national report in 2014, and submitted also its sixth national report in April 2019. These are actually the outcomes. The first was the right, right, left hand is the fifth national report. In the middle one is the revised Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. I would like to remind you that you have around five minutes left. Okay. Thank you. Implements of achievements. Uh, yeah, for the five, uh, uh, for the five national report was indicated in three different categories. Very good, very well, good and fair. 
and nine were uh, regardless uh, very well, five as good and four as well. The six national report was uh, implemented level reported in traffic like uh, description. Ten were uh, categorized as gr green, seven as yellow. Technical support uh, was planned to be conducted mainly by using the available national capacity. However, there were some implementers that have gone uh, gotten their uh, support from other sources. Financial support. When we come to the financial support, it was expected from three sources. It is the government budget one. The second was funds to be secured by implementing agencies by their own efforts. And the third one was expected from Secretariat uh, and GF as per the uh, ABIC by uh, 20 provision. Needs for current in, uh, adjustment are national and external in nature. The national words uh, include engaging in awareness raising, a strengthening in subcore restructure, a strengthening by the mechanisms for implementation, locating and lobbying, uh, and security funds, especially in the private sector, refining and fine tuning alignments of national targets with corresponding global targets. The needs uh, of international nature include uh, setting well understandable global provisions, organizing relevant capacity events and bring parties to equal structure of understanding vis-a-vis -vis the NBSA process, encouraging parties to take part in capacity building events and refrain from regular changing their delegates, and facilitating communi uh, early communication timely release of the allocated uh, funds and leaving to the commitment. The final section was uh, unresolved challenge for implementation. This is mostly uh, I have discovered in uh, the previous section, but satisfactory engagement of stakeholders physical auditing of the reported implementations and designating representative PS across ecosystems of the country are those that will concentrate in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ethiopia. I would now like to open the floor for questions by representatives of, par of the parties that have sent in their questions beforehand. And we will now have a question from Uganda. Uganda, if you please raise your hand. Uganda, you have the floor. Uganda, please go ahead, Uganda. Chair, I got a little hitch here. Well, thank you, Ethiopia, for your presentation. It was very good. However, we see that there was no clear baseline indicated across all the achievements to demonstrate any rate of change or progress. I would like to know if there is any clarification on this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Uganda. And we also have and a question have a question from Georgia. Georgia, do you have the floor? Uh, I wonder how uh, Ethiopia tried to achieve synergies with other biodiversity-related conventions, whether the focal points of other conventions were involved in development and later at the implementation stage of MBSEPs, and what are the lessons learned from this process? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Georgia. And we also have one question from Canada. Canada, if you please raise your hand. Yes, Canada, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Ethiopia, Ethiopia for your presentation. Um, based on your experience, would you recommend this process as a mechanism to be integrated into the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework for strengthening accountability? And if so, what would be the lessons learned uh, moving forward? Thank, 
Thank you, Canada. And before I give the, the floor to Theo to answer, I just want to acknowledge that I see that Sudan has asked for the floor. I think Indonesia did that as well. But as I said before, unfortunately, this session is only responses only for questions sent in beforehand in according with the agreed modalities. So that, therefore, only those questions that were sent in before could be answered. So please, Ethiopia, if you could answer to the questions that have been raised, if you raise your hand. Yes, Ethiopia, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much for these very important questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, says there is no clear baseline indicated across all achievements. Yeah, during the uh, during, uh, submission of this report, we did not uh, accommodate all these uh, issues into the report. But out of the uh, 18 national targets, most of baselines, and for example, I can show number eight, national virus target eight has a baseline. It says increase exit collections of species breeding strains straws from 62 species to 99 species or 76,512 uh, accessions to 80,517 uh, access of field and horticultural crops 740 species to 1,012 1,240 species or 1,740 to 4,746 species of forest and regional plants, five breed species to eight, which is uh, 32,600 straws to 132. Uh, and 500, from 550 microbial genetic risk conserved to 1,000. The same is true for the exit conservation target nine and also for target 11. For example, it says genetic materials accessed for research and development in the ABS will be increased from 163,834 to 2,003,960 to, to 86 accesses and biospecific species and 13 to 18 species for access beneficiary. These all have been achieved over 100%. When I come to the other other questions, very important one from Georgia, in Ethiopia, yeah, there are a lot of uh, biodiversity related uh, conventions, such as Integrated uh, International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resource Food and Agriculture, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, and Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Citus. These are all, fortunately, all of these conventions are housed in the same institution in uh, the uh, Commission for Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Experts from all these institutions were involved in the stock taking and overall in the preview process. The focal persons of the, the, uh, these conventions, some of them were members of NBTC, National Biosphere Technical Committee. And they were also uh, assigned through the commission, through the respective agencies, to assign to implement one or two actions of the, the strategic, uh, the, our, in, in, uh, our national target. And they were all made sure to involve in the all overall validation stakeholder workshops. The lessons were coordination between and other uh, conversion between CB and CBD and other biodiversity related conventions in planning, implementing decision making validation the process has enhanced the implementation of our revised NBSAP. And the process uh, enabled uh, to use efficiently the resources that are found in different conventions. Some of the workshops were also organized by them. And the, it promoted the knowledge based planning on implementation. Thank you. The third one was from Canada, very important one. The, our answer is yes to the question. The question says, based on your experience, would you recommend this process as a mechanism to be integrated into the post 2020 global virus framework? 
for the strength with the accountability. Yeah, we say yes, because it will help, we believe it will help parties to learn from failures and success, uh, and enable to design the forthcoming such endeavors in a smarter way, the, uh, which means to develop clear and well-defined national targets and corresponding actions, including clear baseline uh, map, uh, yeah, um, enable us mapping of national targets to global provisions in a better way. And in some cases, it has given us a chance and ambitions or national commitments and offer proper precautions of the implementation of the NPSA. Thank you. Many thanks, Ethiopia. May I congratulate you on being among the first parties to being reviewed. And on behalf of all parties, I wish to thank you for your willingness to participate in this process, which will certainly be of the benefit of the convention process. Thank you very much. I would now like to turn to the third presentation. I would like to give the floor to Poland to make a presentation. So, Poland, if you please raise your hand. Yes, Poland, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you, Chair, and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, uh, depending on what part of where you are at that moment. Uh, so we have honor to present uh, our achievements in implementation of the uh, convention. Okay, so our uh, review was based on our six national report. Uh, this report was drafted by the Minister of the Environment in consultation with other sectors and relevant stakeholders. Uh, later on, was adopted by the Minister of Environment and submitted to the Secretariat on 14th of February uh, 2019. And you can see uh, on uh, the clearinghouse mechanism, uh, report was sent in online, sent in online format. Uh, report, uh, I was talking about uh, our uh, implementation of uh, biodiversity, biodiversity strategy, uh, which in turn was drafted by a group of experts uh, in the Ministry of Environment, consulted at national level with other sectors and interested actors and st stakeholders. Uh, our strategy was adopted at the highest political level, it means by the Council of Ministers in November 2015. A strategy transforms into national level obligations coming from Global Strategic Plan for Biodiversity and the EU Biodiversity Strategy. A strategy consists of one overarching goal, seven objectives, several dozen of targets, uh, for each, uh, there is a rational leading actors and indicators. Uh, uh, as I already told, uh, we have in total seven objectives in our strategy. Uh, and it is improvement of knowledge level and increase society activities, improvement of nature protection system, preservation and restoration of natural habitats and endangered species, maintenance and reconstruction of ecosystem providing services for humans, integration of economy sectors with biodiversity objectives, reducing threats for climate change and invasive alien species, and increasing Polish participation on biodiversity in international uh, fora. And now I would like to, to tell you about our achievements under each uh, objection uh, regarding improvement of knowledge level and increase of society activities. Uh, several activities 
were performed, uh, including uh, development of nature inventory database and methodology uh, of data collection, uh, extension of uh, central register of nature protection forms, uh, development of additional uh, subsystems of our um, nature monitoring. We also uh, made uh, trainings for public administration and enforcement authorities on legal, legal regulations uh, on biodiversity. Uh, another activities uh, goes with development of biodiversity protection volunteering system. Uh, development of local partnerships and implementation of many educational programs and biodiversity campaigns. Uh, regarding the second objective of improvement of nature protection system, among uh, activities uh, undertaken uh, was enlargement of our national parks and nature reserves network improving nature protection in the landscape parks and protected landscape areas, a development of management plans for protected areas and incorporation of their indications into sectoral documents and local law. Establishment and implementation of protection activities monitoring system, a review of methodologies on state of nature habitats and species, and increase of effectiveness of absorption of biodiversity funds. Uh, next objective uh, goes with preservation and restoration of natural habitats and endangered species. And under this objective, uh, undertaken actions uh, include uh, development and implementation of national protection programs for key protected species determination of distribution of breeding bird species, organization of rescue centers for protected alien and dangerous animal species, and development and implementation of protection and restoration projects on degraded species, uh, habitats, sorry. Uh, on next objective, uh, which is maintenance and reconstruction of ecosystems uh, providing services for humans, uh, we made identification and assessment of the state of ecosystem functions and services and uh, inclusion of green infrastructure into special planning at the local level. A very important part of our uh, national strategy uh, was integration of economy sectors with biodiversity uh, objectives. Uh, regarding agriculture and forestry, I would like to mention a uh, promotion of rational management of native breeds of farm animals, uh, collection and storage of farm animals, biological material in our national gene bank, uh, protection of forest birds, rare native tree species, and increase in volume of dead wood in forests, increase water retention in forests, and formation and maintenance of forest stands of diverse structure and age. Uh, second uh, or th third uh, important uh, sector is fishery. On fishery, you can see the uh, following actions undertaken, like implementation of regulation on the reduction of discards in fishery, development and implementation of data recording procedures on bycatch of protected species, identification and implementation of fishing techniques and tools fostering biodiversity protection, and conservation of endangered species habitats by maintenance of or recovery of extensive fisheries management of fish ponds. Next sector important for uh, biodiversity, uh, water management and tourism. And on, on this uh, activities, uh, which we uh, wanted to, to, to share with you are development and implementation of guidelines on biodiversity protection in hydrotechnical investments, 
implementation of instruments to maintain natural habitats of endangered migrating fish species, development and promotion of principles of, uh, for sustainable tourism development in areas of high biodiversity values, and enhance of integration of tourist activities for nature protection. Uh, next next uh, objective of our national strategy is uh, redu reducing threats from climate change and alien species. And under this object object objection, uh, we have several activities, including development of appropriate organizational and financial arrangements for implementation of the EU regulation on invasive alien species, implementation of alien species eradication programs, and establishment of supervision and monitoring system on invasive alien species in Poland. The last objective was about increasing Polish participation on biodiversity in, the, in international fora. And, um, and among actions, uh, I would like to mention cooperation on protection and management of protected species and habitats in, in transboundary and biogeographical regions, implementation of access and benefit sharing regulations, supporting research and biodiversity protection activities outside Polish borders, and implementation of exotic timber trade regulations. Uh, regarding technical and financial uh, resources uh, during our implementation, uh, we would like to mention that in Poland there is a system of nature conservation bodies. Uh, it is uh, under our act on uh, nature protection. And this act tells that uh, we have following uh, bodies like Minister of the Environment, General Directorate for Environmental Protection, and in each of our 16 uh, voivodeship, uh, we have regional directorates. In addition to that, we have on uh, regional government level 16 voivods and on self-government regional uh, on regional self-government uh, we have 16 marshals Indeed, Hold on. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. i yes, just would like to remind you uh, that you have five yes, minutes left okay yes it's thank, fine. You. thank you uh, 23 directors of our national uh, parks, uh, 380 district starosts, and approximately 2,500 mayors. Uh, also, we have some advisory bodies. At national level, it's State Council for Nature Protection. Uh, on regional levels, we have six, 16 regional councils for nature protection, and also several scientific council in national and landscape parks. Uh, biodiversity monitoring and checks of users of genetic resources uh, is run by Chief Inspectorate of Environmental Protection and 16 regional inspectors. Uh, financial resources for implementation uh, coming mainly from National Fund for Environmental Protection and Water Management and 16 regional funds, EU financial programs, European Economic Area and Norway grants, and Swiss Fund. And uh, yearly, we spent on biodiversity in this period covered by uh, our report, approximately 350 million US dollar. Uh, the current NBSAPS was developed uh, a long time ago, it means in 2014-15, so uh, there is a need to revise and update this document accordingly, accordingly to current priorities. New NBSAP will be based on post-2020 global biodiversity framework and our new EU biodiversity strategy, of course taking into account our national conditions and circumstances. Uh, among unresolved challenges, uh, I would like to mention that several targets in current NBSAPs will probably not be reached by the end of 2020. Why? Main reasons 
uh, insufficient human and financial resources, not sufficient promotion of biodiversity issues within the whole society, and not sufficient cooperation between stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Poland. I will now like to open the floor for questions by the representatives of the parties. We will now first have a question from Uganda. And I, as before, I have to remind uh, all that it's only questions that have been sent in beforehand and, and except that will could be raised now. So even if I acknowledge that both Micronesia and Iran has asked the floor, um, I cannot give you the floor this time. But first we start with a question from Uganda. Please raise your hand. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. And thank you, Poland, for the wonderful presentation and the progress made in your NBSAP. I have one question from Uganda, and it's under Objective D and F. Uh, Objective D and F, uh, your measurement number 27, you indicate uh, what are the expected and actual outputs of the project. That is the developing of the adaptation plans for climate change in the cities with over 100,000 residents, as indicated in your report. Thank you. Thank you, Uganda. Thank you, Uganda. We also have a question from Sweden. If you raise your hand. Sweden, you have the floor. Chair, and thank you to Poland for this uh, really impressive list of actions. Could you maybe further elaborate how the action described in your um, review report, but also in the presentation, um, contribute to achieve your national goals and uh, what the level of national progress is? Thank you. Thank you, Sweden. I will now give the floor to Poland for their response. Yes, please, Poland, you have the floor. Okay, okay thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, go to Uganda. Thank you very much for your question because it's really nice that you, uh, you read our report very carefully and uh, paid attention to um, this specific uh, issue. Uh, yes, it is a very, very interesting uh, project. And, uh, we, I, I dare say we are very proud of this project as well. Uh, development of plans to adapt to climate changes in cities with over uh, uh, 100,000 inhabitants was uh, an innovative project of our Minister of Environment. A major objective it was of it was assessment of uh, sens sensitivity to climate change of 44 largest police cities and planning adaptation activities appropriate for uh, identified threats. Uh, because of range of this project, uh, this was the only initiative, as I know, in uh, the whole Europe, in which the Minister of Environment supported uh, local ad authorities, local administration, uh, coordinating activities uh, on ad adaptation to climate change uh, effects in, in several dozen of cities at the same time. Uh, development urban adaptation plan plans in 44 uh, cities uh, participating in the project, uh, as well in our capital, I mean Warsaw. Warsaw was just outside the project, but uh, in parallel, similar project was run uh, especially uh, for Warsaw. Uh, so all those plans will contribute to protecting uh, about 30% uh, of uh, Polish citizens against climate uh, change uh, effects. Uh, and also at, that, at, the, at the same time, it uh, helped 
helps to protect biodiversity as well because the, those issues are strictly interconnected. Uh, each uh, of 44 plans describes uh, relevant uh, city taking, taking into account uh, their natural, functional, special demographic conditions, uh, economic potential, and, and etc. Uh, in document, we can uh, find a diagnosis of detailed climatic and hydrological data, assessment of uh, city sensitivity to climate change, uh, um, adaptation potential, risk opportunities, etc. Et, et so at that moment, we have already done all those 44 uh, plans. Uh, almost every um, plan is at that moment adopted by uh, local authorities as a local law. It's very important. Uh, cost, the total cost of, of project was uh, about 30 million of police lotic. It means more than 7 million euros. Uh, money came from EU co cohesion fund and uh, Polish budget. The uh, project was run from January uh, 2017 till 2019. Uh, and uh, at that moment, uh, because this project is uh, over, but there is a follow-up. In March th this year, uh, we started an initiative entitled City with Climate, with the aim of uh, with the aim to improve quality of life of residents and support citizens transforming into climate friendly and neutral uh, cities. Uh, so I, I, I could continue, but I understand that we have uh, limited time for this. Uh, so I, I would like to pass uh, to next uh, question uh, asked by Sweden. Uh, so thank you, Sweden, uh, for, for your. Uh, interesting uh, question. Uh, so, uh, when we analyzed actions uh, uh, taking with this period of time, 53% uh, of all action actions were assessed as effective. Uh, 29 actions as partially effective, and only 2% of activities were, uh, were ineffective. Uh, for other activities, no evaluation was made due to lack of relevant uh, information uh, on the status of implementation. Uh, but assessment of progress in meeting our several national obje objectives um, uh, showed a little a little bit different uh, situation. Uh, none of those seven objectives uh, will be achieved uh, in planned period. It means by the end of 2020. Uh, progress uh, was made, uh, but the progress was not sufficiently uh, for four objectives. It was objective on, on uh, improvement of knowledge level, improvement of nature protection system, on maintenance and reconstruction of ecosystem uh, providing services, uh, and objective on reducing threats from uh, climate change and invasive alien species. Uh, we uh, found that we are moving away from one target. Uh, it was uh, this, the last one, increasing Poland's participation on biodiversity issues in the international fora. And uh, assessment was impossible due to lack of data uh, for indica the indicators for uh, two objectives. Uh, it is preservation and restoration of natural habitats and endangered species and integration of economy sectors with biodiversity objectives. And um, why there is so difference uh, in assessment of actions and, and objectives. Uh, uh, it uh, comes from different indicators. Uh, assessment uh, was done by uh, using indicators. In, uh, different indicators 
uh, were approved for actions, different for objectives. And uh, because indicators, although indicators are not able to cover the whole uh, range of, of activities, uh, just one part, smaller or bigger, but but just one part. So uh, it occurred that those indicators which were included in our LBSAPs probably weren't the best one. Uh, so in addition to assessment uh, made uh, uh, on the basis of, of indicators, we uh, made another assessment uh, based on uh, experts' opinion. Uh, we, we request uh, experts uh, about uh, their opinion, and uh, it was made in a f uh, form of a survey sent to more, more than 130 research institutes and, and uh, around 70 NGOs dealing with biodiversity. And most, most responses indicated that Poland is on track to achieving national objectives. Uh, but uh, due, to the, due to the subjectivity of uh, opinions expressed and uh, rather low response rate, uh, the result of study is only illustrative and uh, constitutes limited evidence in assessing progress of the implementation of national uh, targets. Uh, and in our opinion, uh, areas that require more, more involvement uh, from our sites, so our site uh, for implementation are IG targets number one, three, four, five, and six. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Poland. May I congratulate you on being among the first parties to be reviewed. And on behalf of all parties, I wish to thank you for your willingness to participate in the pro this process, which will certainly be on the benefit of a convention process. We have come to the end of the session today. Uh, as we have come to the end of a two-hour session, we will meet tomorrow at the same time. I would like to thank you all for your participation today, and we will continue our consideration of a review reports tomorrow morning at the same time. We'll then begin our consideration of a report of a panel of resource mobilization after that. And before adjourning, I would like to note that tomorrow, when I open the floor for questions, answer and interventions on resource mobilization, I would like to prioritize regional statements first. And to facilitate this, and is, it has been said before, of course, but to ensure the best quality of interpretation, I would be grateful if you could send email the secretariat to the email address statements at cbd.int, your regional statements ahead of a session. And that way we will have a name of those parties that will make the the regional statements, and I will then call on those parties to make their interventions first. So please keep your statements also to four or five minutes to enable as many as possible to intervene tomorrow. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, this session is adjourned. <laughs>